having six wisdom teeth, I think, is indicative of my wisdom and then having them all removed um, that I'm still tough. Um, again, I am um, Casey Pierce. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Michigan in the School of Information. Um, this has been a great conference. I'm very thankful to Milton and the VC team for inviting me out. Um, originally from California, so it's always nice to come back home, um, but it's also nice to come back home to California when it's winter in Michigan. Um, but uh, my talk today, um, I want to present about um, a new project where I'm working on implementing a telehealth program at a senior community center in Michigan. Um, so I've heard some of the questions throughout the conference also um, as telehealth relates to older adults. So it's still a new project. Um, so I look forward to your questions and feedback, um, but hopefully some of the feedback um, and the ideas from this presentation can address some of those concerns as well. And a little bit about my background. Um, I come from a background in organizational studies. And so I'm particularly interested in how we think about managing technology implementation and the effects of technology as we look at how organizations change and how they change occupational practices as well. Um, so telehealth enables a really great um, venue to examine those issues and in this particular project um, that we're seeing a lot of those issues um, also unfold as well. Um, and one of the themes that we've realized throughout this conference is that we see all the benefits with technology and what telehealth enables us, but we realize that it's not only just about technology, that technology is not value neutral, um, that our mental models and our biases as we create and implement these technologies um, become embedded in them, and that we have to really consider deeply about the relationship between the social and the technical. So where I want to also direct your attention today is also thinking about the interplay between as we think about people and place and those impacts um, as we think about technology choices. And specifically when we think about people, when we think about older adults, um, that technology typically is not designed by or designed for older adults in mind. So even though that we realize a lot of the technologies that we take for granted that um, enable us to plug and play and simplify our lives, that they might introduce um, unnecessary constraints or challenges for um, particular individual users that did not necessarily have a say in how these technologies are created and that they're trying to create workarounds in how they think about using them. And particularly with telehealth, even though that we recognize that it um, enables access to healthcare services for those that otherwise would not have it, that we really have to be mindful about technology adoption and usage um, across different types of demographics. So specifically with seniors, um, that I would direct your attention to a study um, by the Pew Research Center that has gone into depth about this, that they really highlight that there's a digital divide among seniors. That although technology adoption and usage rates are increasing among older adults, but that the divide between seniors who are older from a lower socioeconomic status that have lower educational levels are more distant from technology. And that technology distance in referring to not only in terms of use, but in terms of how comfortable that you feel using that technology. Do you require extra support and uh, education to actually use the technology? Um, and that differs across different demographic groups, even within the older adult population. And we realize that internet use and broadband adoption is very important as well, as I'll get into later on with the community that we're looking at at Michigan, that this is very important in terms of with rural um, areas as well. That 67% of seniors go online, that this has been increasing, but definitely is below where the um, the averages for other demographic groups in the US. And only about half of seniors have high speed internet um, access at home. And again, that we see that this adoption with internet use and broadband varies greatly by age, income, and education. So we really have to keep these things in mind where we think about the interplay with this as in terms of place. That in terms of where you are also determines in how you would have access. Um, but with older adults that we know that there's importance with having to support older adults to age in place. And that this requires to move where we think about traditional sites of clinical care across boundaries. 
um, that typically for older adults this may mean in their home, but older adults are not in their homes 24-7, that they also are part of their communities as well. So we have to think about leveraging particular community centers as we are in this project on how to implement telehealth so that older adults who might not have the internet access at home can go out to other community centers to um, be able to access a telehealth service in the first place. Um, in the particular senior um, community center that um, we are um, implementing this program in is located, located in Southeast Michigan. It is not a residential facility, um, so it is open to all community members. Um, their age range is pretty broad um, in terms of 50 plus. Um, and that they service um, very many members in the community, about 1,000 that have different levels of activity and connection with the senior center. Um, this, this particular center, it's run out of what used to be a former elementary school. So they have availability with a lot of space. So they have dedicated rooms um, that we can look at implementing to have the telehealth room there. And they also have the advantage of having not only internet access, but having available um, staff and volunteers there to help assist the seniors to, for getting online. And where we recognize one of the advantages that we have with this is that we're able to really combine the high touch, having people on site, um, also with the high tech. So that for those that may uh, feel that it's uh, not accessible for them at home, um, that being able to come to a community center where they already are going to participate in the variety of activities that they have, meal programs, speaker series, um, different clubs and hobbies and activities that it um, is aligned well um, with that mission. And with this particular telehealth program that we're looking to focus on wellness and well-being since it is aligned with the already existing social support and um, social connections that are there at the center and particularly with um, providing telemental health services. Um, with the seniors that we have interviewed and surveyed um, at this um, community and also with previous work that we realized that social isolation and issues with depression and other mental health issues um, are very high among the senior population but they don't necessarily get the access um, and the support that they actually need. Um, so that, as I mentioned earlier, that we realize that there's challenges with implementing telehealth in rural areas. Um, but again, because of the resources that they have, namely a transportation service that can reach out to homebound seniors to actually bring them to the community center, that we realize that this becomes an important hub within the community that allows for access and being able to um, get the telehealth um, services that older adults might not necessarily be able to get if they don't feel comfortable accessing on their own smartphone or their own um, computer at home. So when we think about um, the different technology choices um, with, techno uh, with telehealth technologies, then we realize that screen-based video conferencing is a primary tool, um, but we uh, recognize from other research um, and um, from surveys that we've conducted that screen-based technologies can also present um, barriers for, for some older adults where we think about issues with dexterity, where um, using a mouse and pointing and clicking and typing um, that are, might be things that we take for granted, but can um, become barriers for some older adults as well. And also, and as we think about how we interact and access information on a screen, that again, we might be leveraging our own mental models and how we interact with those technologies that are not necessarily the same across all different types of user groups. So when we think about hidden drop-down menus, how to navigate from screen to screen, that for many of us in the room, that we might be able to do that seamless, seamlessly, um, but for others that might be more unfamiliar with um, technologies and interacting with them, that it can make it hard to access information. And we're also keeping in mind of where we think about technology at the intersection with health information. That if we are delivering health information that can be complex and also provoke um, stress and anxiety for, for people, but then at the intersection through a medium that is also presenting those same constraints and barriers that we might not necessarily be leveraging and using technology in the best ways possible for um, this particular group. So as we think about our technology choices um, with telehealth, that we want to make sure that we're aligning both um, the important aspects of people in place, 
Um, so specifically that um, using this community center for offering um, on-site um, telehealth consults, um, so not um, necessarily thinking about it in individual homes in, in the community, but what the community center as a central hub can offer. Um, and also that they are in a unique position to address some of the unmet needs of homebound um, seniors as well. That um, there still are very um, many challenges and unmet needs um, within that particular group, um, but because they have the connection, they have volunteer nurses who do call check-ins, that they have this awareness of who that person is um, so that they have the ability to do more consistent follow-up and being able to bring people there to integrate them into that community. And then lastly, we're exploring um, how to address some of these barriers with screen-based technologies, with voice-based technologies as well. Some of you might be familiar with the Saturday Night Live spoof with Amazon Silver um, that kind of pokes fun at um, using Amazon Alexa um, for older adults, but we recognize that there's opportunities here that um, voice-based technologies that can tap into the natural way and in how individuals speak and want to connect. Um, but we're beginning some early stage work right now digging into unpack how people form their questions and what they expect to get back um, varies across different um, user groups as well. But with that, I will go ahead and stop and I look forward to your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dr. Pierce, as a geriatrician who trained at University of Michigan, go blue. Oh, go blue. Uh, um, quick question. Uh, as you know, some of the highest utilization in the elderly is in homebound frail elderly. They are the most frequently hospitalized. Have you worked with home care agencies who actually see them in their homes to help with hospital readmissions and uh, decreasing the frailty? That's a great question, thank you. So we haven't worked with um, those organizations, but one particular program that the community center runs is a meal delivery service. Um, so we have been working with those volunteers in that program specifically that sees these homebound individuals um, on a very frequent basis so that we're coming aware on what are the challenges that they have. Um, from issues of being able to get up and actually unlock the door um, is a challenge. Um, not wanting to actually turn on the computer. So we're getting like the nuances on when we think that we just can't slap the technology solution on there. Um, so we're looking at not just in issues of access and being able to use the actual tools, but then also the role that the community center, particularly those volunteers have in being kind of like this broker in being able to become aware of what those seniors, um, those homebound seniors are challenged with and helping them to get the resources that they need. Um, but we're recognizing that there are privacy issues that we have to um, contend with as well since these volunteers are not necessarily trained clinicians per se, but we are exploring that further. Thanks. Dr. Pierce, thank you, that was excellent. Uh, my question is on on-site telehealth services, and I know you're still building it out. Can you talk a little bit about the staff needs to be able to provide those services and, and more specifically what they will be? I know you touched on telemental health. And yes, so being able to leverage the existing volunteers that they have, they do have retired nurses who volunteer, um, so we're looking at bringing them as part of this program as well. Um, and also in terms of um, the partnership that our research group has as well that we are looking to supplement with having different workshops to educate also the users to um, on what this means. So again, um, trying to unpack some of those mental models that we have that it's not just the cold, sterile um, computer screen um, in a, sitting in a room that you're going to and trying to help um, that transition process. So with collaboration with our team as well um, and also the existing volunteers. So in the next stages with building it out, we would be considering on how to bring also um, um, clinicians to partner um, more frequently on site with the program too. Um, thank you. So, I think, um, unfortunately, we have actually slightly short on time because our next uh, four set of speakers, three of them has a flight to catch. But again, so thank you so much. Definitely you could catch Dr. Pierce during the interaction. So we're, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.